tangentially related. Um, I don't realize how loud my fridge is until my power goes out. Yes. It's like my apartment gets like so much quieter when my <laughs> fridge isn't running. <laughs> I mean, like, it makes oh sense. God. Yeah, it's just white noise by now, right? You're so yeah, used to it. You yeah. just don't it's hear it anymore. Constant hum. Yeah, and when it's, it's gone, really it's like, annoying. what's what's happening? Something's wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, all, especially old fridges can be so loud. Oof. Mine's pretty new. Like, it's probably about a decade old, I guess. But it's like the freezer especially has like this weird like sound that it makes which is like it's like darth vader getting stabbed <laughs> it's a very strange sound but I'm not a fan of it yep but i mean as long as you the... don't like realize it sorry i was gonna throw us into a podcast but you you go on no it's fine go go ahead Cut me out. All good. Okay, fine. Uh, I'll throw us into the podcast anyways then, because this is the uh, the 16th episode of the Halcyon Frequency podcast for May 1st, 2022. I'm blind and I'm hosting, and I'm jo joined by 2D Kiri. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm very happy to be in an episode again, because I missed the last, I don't know, two, three? I don't yeah, know. It's been a minute. Yeah. Good to be back. But it's great to have you back. And we're also joined by FG Squared. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. I'm very amazed that we've made it four freaking months already. That's kind of incredible. That's I guess like... that's what 16 weeks adds up to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when you yeah. say it like that, that's that's really cool. GG Considering, us. Yeah, that most podcasts don't make it past, like, what, four or five? That's pretty impressive. I, I do actually sometimes wonder what the average statistic of that is, like how long you're most podcasts last it can't be that high probably no not clue. i would assume we'll, we'll be fun like to know three though. episodes <laughs> maybe i'll have to like go trolling through the low rungs of the internet and find some top 10 statistics on how badly podcasts tend to perform or something that article's been written <laughs> at least once has That'd to have fun. happened absolutely yeah I, I think I have to start this episode with a caveat saying that uh, it's fire alarm testing day in my building. So if there's a weird, crazy bird off in the distance screaming really loudly, it's probably my fire alarm. I'll do my best to edit everything out and post, but uh, there's only so much I can do to a degree. So it's fine. It's not too loud. But Blind had already, has already told us that we were not allowed to react to it so that he can cut it out. If I'm not talking. If I'm talking, then I, I don't know if I can cut it out. So we'll try. We'll just be, yeah, we'll just be. But hey, if you notice the fire alarm at some point, leave a comment. <laughs> I suppose it's right there. <laughs> well, Perfect. There, there it goes. Yep. And I reacted. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave that one in for test purposes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yep. Hope everybody's but, uh, awake now. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. That's your fire alarm. Um, but yeah, that's that's been going off since 9 a.m. and it's going to continue until about 2. But as they leave the cor my corner of the building, they should stop setting off this hallway's fire alarm, so it, sh it should be fine. This is it's a, the annual fire alarm test. They used to do these every three months, and then the pandemic happened. Now it's annual, so. Oh, God. I yeah. mean... That's good because you want a working fire alarm, but every three months, that's a bit that too is, much. That is very frequent. I, I, I think it's, it, it's, it's kind of telling that they're doing it right now, though, because there's been a weirdly large amount of home fires and arson in my area, so I don't mind them doing it, honestly. That makes the building sense, across yeah. the street burnt down a couple weeks ago. So You mentioned like, that. Yeah, I... I'm, I'm I'm at a point now where it's like, yeah, just please test the fire alarms. That's fine. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a safe sorry. Alarms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, slight inconvenience I'll, I'll tolerate. But um, on the topic of slight inconveniences, I hear that FG has a road in front of her house now. I do have a road in front of the house now. Yeah. Because uh, so we moved into a new build. Like, oh, God, it's been six weeks. How's it been six weeks? What? There's no. It's... Almost as long as the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, but... not quite. A little, little, little bit, little bit shorter, but yeah, yeah. So um, there's lots of construction going on here, and uh, the we finally have a road because there was lots of heavy traffic still. So they didn't actually like finally tarmac the road, but they did it like yesterday and the day before. So now there's like lots of it's it's much more quieter, and there is a smooth road. It's it's like almost living in like a proper area. We're still waiting on our uh, street sign though. And we're still waiting 
for our postcode to even show up when you search for it. Because right now you put it into your stat nav and it leads you nowhere. <laughs> so if, if you try to Google Maps from like your local grocery store to your house, does it like just tell you to go around it or something because it doesn't know where the roads are? Or does Google no, Maps know that you exist? So no, Google Google doesn't know. Um, Google Google Maps does, but the directions don't work. The directions send you off somewhere, um, which is like I guess like two and a half miles away or something, because that's where they originally registered that postcode. And uh, if you if you look on it on Google Maps, you see um, houses drawn in, but there's no road, and the the road that that road goes off of doesn't have a name. And if you look in Google Earth, you just see half-built houses. <laughs> yeah, off the grid. Yeah, Currently. kind of. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> it's uh, it's been part of the uh, adventure. It's definitely been part of the the buying, selling a house, and buying a new house adventure. And that's how, that's what it's been indeed. <laughs> there, there's a bridge that's pretty close to me, which I think of in my head as the new bridge. <clears throat> because it, they finished constructing it in 2011. Um, but it was kind of controversial because they dropped it into the river twice. Um, look at you, German company that we hired. Anyway, um, <laughs> which pissed off a lot of local people because they're like, why didn't you hire the locals to do it? We wouldn't have dropped it in the river. And it's like, absolutely, you would have. Anyway, um, <laughs> it was an architectural failure, not the not the bridge. It wasn't their fault, actually. Anyway, um, while they were building, once they finished the bridge, it took four years for Google Maps to figure out that bridge was there. <laughs> so you try and Google Maps yourself across this bridge and it would just be like, swim <laughs> or like go four hours up the river to the next bridge um, <laughs> that's connected to this road. But it's like, no, this bridge is here. We swear. That's really funny. That it took great, forever yeah. for Google Maps to like register that that bridge was there. The bridge was supposed to be finished construction in 2009 and they didn't finish it until 2011 because they kept breaking it. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean considering like just looking at german construction stats and looking at you know the new quote-unquote berlin airport that i think is i don't know if it's finally started operating but i think it was was not supposed to start operating in like 2016 or something or earlier years or ago 20, i don't know like yeah yeah i'm not surprised <laughs> I, I mean i've heard about that airport and i'm in like almost the other side of the planet so yeah <laughs> That was definitely interesting. Though I, though I do think... No, they actually opened it. I, I just looked it up. They actually opened it in 2020, apparently. I guess Great, they just opened in time for them to close it. Nobody went anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Perfect time to open an airport. <laughs> better have an airport and not use it than not use it and... No, never mind. We could call it a soft lodge. Yeah, for like Thanks. So. two years, what? Just slowly mm. ramp up production. It'll just make sure everything works. <laughs> oh, right. well, maybe actually not that bad of an idea when it comes to an airport. Mm, but Maybe. Pretty funny. Uh, one, one of my moderators works in um, airport automation. I'm not going to out who he is because, like, you know. But anyway, he works in airport automation, so it's his whole job to, like, make sure that your bag makes it to the right plane. But he mm -hmm. designs those systems and maintains those systems. And it's really fun. Like, you mentioned any airport in, like, North America. And he's just like, I hate X airport for X reason. This airport is a mess because of this reason. And this airport, don't even... How do people get their bags out of this airport? <laughs> <laughs> like, I have no idea how anybody gets their luggage. <laughs> because everything's a mess. Those systems are so cool, though. And the way they work, they're so cool. Go on YouTube. And just look up like GoPro on luggage in airport. Mm, it's mental. So <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh. It's just like Toy Story. <laughs> it's oddly satisfying for some reason to watch. Yeah, I agree. It's it's just satisfactory, but in real life. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a horrible job also, for me. <laughs> which Ooh, is also yeah. why my moderator hates satisfactory because he's just like, oh god, it's work. It's work. Yeah, <laughs> I understand though. Yeah, true. Does a does satisfactory also feel like work to you? Or I mean, factorial? no, but if if I were to do something like that for work all the time, and 
also it annoys me partially because it doesn't work well in some airports, then I don't want to do the same thing in my free time. Yeah. So that's why I mean, I understand. But. That's exactly how I feel about Viscera cleanup detail. The just like cleaning up alien blood video game because yeah. that, that was my job for years. Maybe not alien blood, just human <laughs> blood, which is kind of worse. But like, it's just... I, yeah, I, I I can't do games about cleaning for that exact reason because it's like I've done this too for too long in my life. Don't need to do it for leisure, I guess. That reminds well, me of iToy for the PlayStation Two, where you had the camera. Have you played that? iToy. Yeah, I've you had the camera iToy, yeah. pointed at you, and there were like mini games where you were actually in the game then, and and there was a cleaning game where. The, the whole TV would then be full of like soap bubbles and you had to just m maniacally wave your arms to clean the monitor and then, you know, you saw you. So it was basically like window cleaning. Uh, reminded me of that. I love that game. I found this exact thing that you're talking about. Yeah, also, so 7 funny. out of 10, IGN. <laughs> it, was, it was great. <laughs> Fitting. Anyway. Eventually, I cheated and I just I just stood there with one arm raised, and then I went from one side of the camera really to the other one and and just cleaned it in one go. I mean, that's just yeah. speedrun strats. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love watching speedruns of mini gum of mini game collections like that because it's always just the silliest strats to just full yeah. complete everything. Absolutely. <laughs> But, uh, you know, th this is kind of the intro section of this podcast, and uh, we do have a very large chunk of games and a huge chunk of news to talk about. So I think that we're going to keep this section a little short, go to a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the games that we've been playing this week, and hopefully the fire alarms cease. Um, we'll be right back. Hello! I'm sure that you're used to hearing a different little advertisement for another stream during this segment of the podcast, but instead you're getting an editor's note from me. And I just wanted to say I apologize for the remaining podcast because a cable was kind of loose on FG's recording and there's an audible kind of amplifier hum. Uh, Discord, the, while we were in the call, cut out parts of it, but my backup audio is worse than the... Um, recorded audio that she recorded so i did my best to chop most of it out but there is some kind of microphone static uh in the remaining podcast apologies and i hope it doesn't damage your listening experience all right, we're back. Thank you very much for, for sticking with us through that short break. And uh, once again, this is the Halcyon Frequency Podcast, hosted by me, Blind IRL, and uh, co-hosted by 2D Kiri and FG Squared this week. Uh, and uh, FG, I, I hear you want to talk about a prehistoric kingdom. Yeah, which has nothing to do with kingdoms, because it's a dinosaur game. <laughs> I literally had so many people come into my chat and be like, I thought this would be a city builder. Yeah, like, why is it called Kingdom? I don't know. The dinosaurs wear crowns, right? That's it. They they do wear crowns. Yes, they do wear crowns. See? Okay. <laughs> this got a really? lot more interesting in the last no, 30 no. seconds. So, so they don't wear crowns, but they have, the game has a logo of a Brachiosaurus with a crown, and there's, like, merch in-game with the dinosaur and the crown on it, and it's oh. actually really cute. So this is like a park? <laughs> Like a dinosaur park, and that one is called Prehistoric Kingdom? Yes. So so basically, Prehistoric Kingdom is you take Planet Zoo, and you take dinosaurs, and you put the dinosaurs into Planet Zoo, plus some extinct giant mammals, like mammoths and woolly rhinos and all of that sort of stuff, and put them into that game. And then you have Prehistoric Kingdom. But it's early access. So a lot of the features, like management features or disease and all that other sort of stuff, is not in yet. But, so it's it's early access. There is not too much to do in it right now. Because, yes, you can get a few dinosaurs and a few of the m um, mammals. Uh, you can build really nicely because it has really good building features in it. Um, like... You can resize props just by holding shift and uh, by holding alt and moving your mouse up and down, which is really nice if you like this really intricate building thing. 
Hmm. But there is so, currently n nothing else to do. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I, I've been aware of Prehistoric Kingdom since about 2015 or 16. And I'm looking at their Kickstarter right now, uh, which finished in 2017, 161% funded. Um, they got like $80,000 of their uh, $50,000 goal. Um, and they were supposed to deliver that game in 2018. November. Ooh. So mm. uh, I know I know they're published now. They were originally independent. Like mm -hmm. they're they're Crivito, right? Yeah. Um, Crivito, yeah. Crivito. Mm -hmm. One. They also have their own game storefront that nobody knows about. Um, but yes. Yeah, I I, I guess with, with this one, I th this was a it's dead games. You know, like I I remember seeing posts about this game in like 2020, going that's never coming out. So I'm actually I'm just impressed that it exists and they actually managed to ship a product. Um, it's also cool to see somebody actually trying to compete with Frontier and like that big zoo building thing. Yeah, it's basically just them and Frontier, right? Yeah, exactly. The thing is, the thing is, um, it 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 has a few like if you put everything on high, it has some stuttering issues, but it's early access. But the the animations and that sort of stuff is actually really nice and as i said like they have some quality of life things in there you can tell that these people played planet zoo a lot because <laughs> a lot of the stuff looks like planet zoo like the entire like um ui basically but they took what people did not like about the building in planet zoo and put that in that game but as i said like the problem the problem is right now that the game is not finished and um, they said it's like 18 to 24 months until it's actually completed. So well, that's it's, a long it, time still. Yeah, it's got a long, long time to go. They do have a really detailed roadmap in Trello, so that's good. But um, this is one right now, unless you really want to get into designing lots of stuff, because with the next big update, they are adding Steam Workshop already. If you're really into designing things, you can go ham because you can do really cool things. You can take like, th there's like basically blank walls, but like, like lots of blank props, like lots of geometrical shapes and roofs and all that sort of stuff, stairs, etc. You can take those, you can resize them however you want and you can adjust the color for them. Like you can make them whatever color you want. And a lot of them have like usually three or four different colored bits that you can then color together so you can make some really really cool looking things but if you're looking for like a dinosaur management game there is nothing of that right now i, I will say this looks like ten thousand times better than the demo i played in like mm. 2015 um the demo i played in 2015 was comparable to uh roller coaster tycoon world um, mm. if you want like a level mm. of comparison but that was also like a very unfinished alpha it, i'm just looking at screenshots of this and honestly like if you showed me a screenshot of a dinosaur from this and a dinosaur from jurassic world evolution i wouldn't be able to tell the difference just at a glance um, which is a massive compliment to them i think prehistoric like kingdom uh dinosaurs can have feathers so <laughs> Ooh, that's good that's great yeah also something like so I, I said there's currently not really any management. There is there is one thing you have to manage. I mean, you have to manage food. You have to manage water. You have to manage um, uh, and, and habitat and enrichment and that sort of stuff. And you have to manage poop. But you don't hire janitors for that. Uh, you hire dung beetles. It's great. You place dung beetles in, in their habitats. And then you have dung beetles running around and they collect the poop. It's great. Do you pay them when you say hire, or is it just you, you click a button and you get a beetle? No, you, you place you place their um I guess I don't know what what do <laughs> dung the, beetles the live in? Hot bubbles? I don't know ground things. You you place you place uh -huh. their basically little little places in the enclosure, and they take care of the poop for you. It's it's a it's an interesting way of dealing with it, I guess. It's funny. I like it. Yeah. I do like the fluffy dinosaurs. Fluffy di plus one for fluffy dinosaurs. Yeah. 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 Also, I mean, yes, the game is in early access, but it's half the price of Planet Zoo. That's of course also it is. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's thirty bucks here, with or thirty three ninety nine. That's actually that's pretty reasonable, all, all yep. things considered, for a game like that. I mean, that's almost the same price as um, uh, Parkosaurus, which was the uh, mm. little bit more right. arcadey little. Uh, that was the zoo same. buildery one. 
That, that game came out. It's finished. People like it. It did well. It's got 2,000 reviews. It's very silly. Actually, yeah, it's like the same price. Parkasaurus is $27.99. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, that's it's, neat. Yeah, it's definitely one uh, that I would say right now, wait. Put it on your wish list and keep an eye on it. But I'm hopeful. Yeah. Curious to see how that one plays out over the next couple months. Um, I'm going to talk about Peglin real quick because I think I can do Peglin really quickly. Peglin, um, y'all played Peggle? No. Do you know what a pachinko machine is? I do because because my chat talked about it and I looked it up because I did it. But now I do. Pachinko is f like Japanese gambling, basically. Like they use them as pachinko. The pachinko parlors are like they use them for gambling illegally in Japan, but it's like a legal workaround. Um, so pe uh, Peggle is uh, probably one of the greatest casual games ever made, made by creators of Plants vs. Zombies and Bejeweled. Um, Peggle Knights is also on Game Pass, so if you have Game Pass, go play Peggle Knights, because it's great! Um, you can fire balls at unicorns and rainbows explode out of them, it's great. Um, but, <clears throat> Peglin is, um, basically Peggle, but it tries to be, um, a dungeon crawler, kind of the vein of something like, uh, FTL. And you shoot balls at pegs. Um, so, Peglin currently, we were just talking about money, is about 20 bucks. I wouldn't recommend it. Unless you are a massive fan of Peggle and dying for a new Peggle. Um, the dungeon crawling elements are fine. There's not a lot of boss variety. I played the game for about five hours and I got like 60% of the achievements. Um, the game's very easy and doesn't feel very good in places. Like I made it to the final boss every single run I did except for the first run. And I didn't finish the final boss once because every time I made it there, the balls just kind of didn't do what I wanted them to do and just lost. So it, it is fun. Like, you know, you, you fire your little balls and it bounces off of stuff like a pinball and you rack up points and then those points are your damage and then the damage shoots out of the thing and there's different combos. You can get multi-balls and there's different balls that do things that like reset the arena and like other fun combos. I blew myself up with bombs once, which was pretty fun because I had like this infinite loop where if it bounced six times, it would spawn a bomb and then it would blow the bomb up immediately upon the bomb just appearing and I set, but the bombs do five damage to me and I fired off so many bombs. I one shot the boss and myself, which was kind of amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, aside from that, I, I found the game more of a test of my patience than actually fun. I think with some development and a bit more variety, I think the game could be incredible. I know some people are really enjoying it because there's some big fans of Peggle out there, but I, I guess some people are bigger fans of Peggle than me. That's what I've come to on it. So wait for a sale if you're really interested. At 10 bucks, I think that game would be a steal, but like it 25 cute. is like... Yeah, the art's great. That's what I like oh, about it. There's like another, the yeah. There's another game kind of like this called Round Guard. Um, and I think that if you really want a good Peggle that's also a dungeon crawler, play Round Guard. And even though I think Round Guard's kind of ugly, it has a... I don't like the art in Round Guard. But the thing about Round Guard is it has a bunch of different classes and they all have abilities. So you fire your ball out and then you can pause time and do things with your ball. So if you're the rogue, you have a little dash and an arrow. So you can pause time with your little rogue and then you can dash forward and then fire an arrow in a different direction. And there's like on-screen bosses and stuff. If you can get past the art style of Round Guard, I think Round Guard's a much better game right now and they're the same price. So that's my comment on Peglin. Good to also know. Worth, worth to note, I'd say with Peglin, it's still early access. Yes. So with, with, with six, right. mo six months to a year development, it, it could get there. Uh, but right now, I'm wait on it. That's, yeah. oh, that's Peglin. I played a game that came out of Early Access. It's called Winkeltier, The Little Shop. Have you played it too? I'm not sure if you've mm -hmm. talked about it already on, on the podcast. I don't no, remember. I wasn't, no, I wasn't on last uh, week, so I didn't. Okay. So it's a shopkeeper, shop management game, and it's by a Dutch developer team. And I just... I mean, I like shopkeeper games, but then also I'm learning Dutch and I thought this is the perfect game that I could play. And so many people came into my chat and asked me to pronounce the game or the name and, and I had so much fun doing it. And I actually had the game running in Dutch for like the first 30 minutes. And it was hilarious because I struggled so much with just reading. <laughs> um, I could understand most of it though. And it was, it was a great time. I think my chat enjoyed it as well, but then I switched back to English. Brings new meaning to the term Kiri difficulty. Exactly. Yeah, it was just enhanced Kiri difficulty then. But as for the gameplay, 
Um, it's it's fun. Like I'm definitely gonna play that more off stream, and I want to finish it because I had a really good time with it. Um, there are some issues concerning simulation sickness though, because the camera does a weird wobble when you start walking. That does nothing to the game. It's just there. And also, when you're in the main menu, the camera rotates. You can't turn it off. But I provided feedback and the developer uh, asked some more questions to really understand what the problem was. And they put it on the to-do list to add settings to turn this off. So that's really, really cool. And I, I wanted to give them a shout out because it's just great when developers listen to feedback like that and make games more accessible. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. FD, how did you like it? I was gonna ask, so I, I had a had a fun time with it as well. Did you play it after it came out at, uh, out of early access, or did you still play the early access version? No, I played the version one. Does that I have, have a m more extensive tutorial? I mean, I don't have a comparison now. I knew what I had to do. The only thing I wasn't sure about because you have to pay back a debt. And you have to do that in, in like, I don't know, 20, 20 parts or something. And then I, I wasn't sure how to do that because it like it said only pay it in like so many days, but I, there was no button. So that was the only thing where I kind of wasn't sure how that would work, but I figured it out. Okay, because like I tried the game and we got pretty far. We got to like play it on normal, play it like to like debt payment 13 i think and then i was like okay you know what? i'm gonna play this on very hard mode because i want all the achievements yeah because <laughs> there are achievements to finish the game on x difficult like on each, yes. each difficulties <laughs> and um the game never tells you about specializations oh um, yeah no i figured that out yeah because like it, do it doesn't mention it at all but it's really mm -hmm. smart to do the specializations because you can direct what your customers want to buy because otherwise they'll come in and they want 40 different things and you can't stock 40 different things, Yeah, basically. So I had a really good time with the game and I'm still playing it off stream because I'm trying to get all the achievements. I still wish it had a little bit of a better tutorial. That, 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 cause, cause it has Fair a tutorial. Enough, like, yeah. Cause it's like, place, place your shopping things, go buy a pallet, buy some items, make money, buy, buy low, sell high, make money and off you go <laughs> yeah and that's kind of kind of it so um but but i still also really enjoyed it I had, yeah i, had I, I think it was really fun but now that you mention it there was that one quest where it said permanently raise the appeal of your shop i think and i didn't mm. know how that worked like that took ages and then somebody in chat told me that i what i had to do but yeah, with true. the specialization i just i figured it out but it would be nice to get that explained yeah yeah, yeah. I no, I actually had some some people literally like um, concept community members bought the game and then they came to that and they didn't know how to do it and they literally came into the Discord and were like, "It said this xxx. I don't know how to do it. Please explain to me how I can raise my uh, level and whatnot." Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, but it's yeah. just a fun game. If you like shops, shopkeeping sims, um, that are just shopkeeping because there's no like dungeon crawling, like Reseteer or anything like that. Yeah. There's crafting um, though. But there's crafting. No, that's true, no fighting yeah. or anything. <laughs> I, mm. I was just looking for Reseteer because I think Sui would like mm -hmm. that game. But yeah. yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> because this was making me think of Reseteer and I was trying to remember the name of that game, but you just reminded me. Thank you. Um I I would like to note that this is one of the <laughs> highest uh rated Steam games in oh, the capitalism tank. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh interesting. No. Uh, uh, I can't pronounce it. The little shop. That's amazing. I, I not even gonna try. <laughs> but mm. just thought I'd note that because I thought that, that was amazing. I mean, um, uh, Euro Truck Simulator is number one, so obviously. But <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it 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 seems really cute. I mean, it, it's Ooh. it's it's a little shopkeeper's game, and I think it's one of those like. Fun no, no. thing, actually, I don't know one, if you one of those saw that. Subgenres Carrie, of games that I think um, could Jess be a lot playing it on that day because but... she was like, "Okay, I finished Tavern Master. I'm not allowed to play more Tavern Master. What do I play?" And I'm like, "Play Winkeltier." And so Winkeltier is Dutch, and Dutch have a national holiday called King's Day, yes. where they celebrate the king's birthday, and everybody wears orange. Yes. And 
in game there's also the king's day uh event but jess actually played on the actual king's day and on the actual king's day in the game everybody just wears orange all the as time as long as you play the game all the time oh that's so cool it's so funny i did not play on that day yeah that it's awesome. so you should... I yeah. think so too, yeah. It's very charming. <laughs> you should get an achievement. For... Well, you should awesome. get an achievement for playing on that yeah. day. I thought that was really cute. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I learned about <laughs> yeah, that the do. other yeah, day. Yeah, they do, like actually. Yeah. Well. Like, it's the king's birthday. I was like, you have a king? <laughs> <laughs> I, so I, I, I fell real deep into Wikipedia pages about the Dutch royal family <laughs> like two days ago. Um, but, you know. Uh, th this isn't about a royal family, but uh, yeah. this is uh, a, a game sure. that I think we all played. Do we, do we want to talk about Dorf Romantic? Hitting 1.0. Um, so Dorf Romantic left early access um, and is now 1.0, which means if you haven't played Dorf Romantic, <laughs> you should go play Dorf Romantic. It's such a nice and chill and game. And I think that's all I have to say about so it's Dorf Romantic. It's a puzzly city builder in a way. You have hexagonal tiles with forests on it, could be houses, river, trains, grass, oh, and fields. And then ideally you match, you, you match forest to forest, house to house, and so on. You get points for that, and eventually you'll run out of tiles. But you can get more tiles when you fulfill quests, and the quest will be like, get a village of 50 houses, for example. Um, it's very chill, it's very nice. The music great yeah totally so there, there are different quests and and that way you get more tiles um i however can rage in that game because <laughs> they added an undo button now and you can undo one of your moves and and i was close to losing it as in losing the game because once you're out of tiles then that's over and you have a you get a high score or you get a score hopefully it's high and and I realized after making a move and then making a second move, uh, if I had two undos, I could have finished another quest and got more tiles and continued playing and would have gotten a new high score. But there's only one undo and then I got really mad. Oh. Yeah. yeah I, I had <sighs> the same thing happen. <sighs> <clears throat> it, it is a great chill game. <laughs> But so I, someone in chat last night referred to it as the most stressful, relaxing experience he's ever had. In a way, um, yeah. I play like a perfectionist because I want to get high points and I, I also want to unlock more tiles and challenges and get the achievements. Oh, I get it's sad good. whenever I unlock stuff because it means I don't have stuff to unlock in the future. Eventually, yeah, when you've got everything. Did you try the new game just, modes? Uh, I just wanted to keep going. So yeah, I, I have played the, the new game modes. So the they added a creative mode throughout early access. So that's been in there for a while. So there's mm -hmm. a creative mode. And whenever when you do lose, you can continue on in creative mode if you like the layout that you have and you want to make a desktop background or something. Um, there's a hard mode where you have a limit of, I think it's 75 tiles total. Um, or sorry, a, a, a quick, quick mode, mode where you can... The quick mode where you can have a limit of 75 tiles mm -hmm. total and a hard mode where it just gives you the complex tiles quicker. So in the classic mode, you start off with very simple tiles with not a lot of stuff on them. Hard mode, it just throws you right under the bus right away. <laughs> um, you'll get like maximum of X number of very specific towns right away. Uh, you'll get town like things with rivers and train tracks and a house on it. Um, and like just really complicated tiles right off the bat that you have to match. And it does crank up the difficulty quite significantly on the hard mode. Um, and then there's the, the quick mode where you have a maximum of 75 tiles, which I think is probably the one I'm going to play the most off stream is just pop in and play a quick mode while a video is rendering. I have a question though. Why yes. would you? Because I tried the different game modes and I tried quick mode, but there are no achievements and there's only a high score for you. There's not even a global why, leaderboard. Why would you? Because yeah. I enjoy playing video games. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't play podcast. games. <laughs> I, I, I play game. I, I, if there's an achievement, huh. I'll sure, I'll go for it. But I don't need achievements as a reason to play a video game. I don't play right. video games because it's a checklist. I play video games because of the enjoyment of the process of playing them. And I've always played games for that reason. If there happens to be achievements and I like a game, I'll go for the achievements because it's like a little extra thingy. That, that, that is really not nice. the intention or the desire. Like from, I will, I 
keep I 100%ed many games in the past that I still play. I've replayed Yomorangi Generation twice since I 100%ed it. I wanted to play it again. I couldn't do that. But yes, yeah, so I, I tried quick mode and I played it once and I was like, yeah, why why did I do that? I, I work differently. D disconnect yourself from platforms. Play games DRM free uh, with no achievements. The horror. <laughs> the horror. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's just why I've always played games that way. I, yeah, I no, that, that's, that's cool. FG. So you did, did, did you play Dorf Romantic 1.0? I actually haven't yet. I actually no. haven't yet. No, because like, so the, the thing is with me, I really enjoy Dorf Romantic because, you know, it's German. So <laughs> today, yeah. this, today is the podcast of like foreign words. <laughs> Think you'll Town hear romance. Dorf Romantic. Um, but uh, I really like it. I really like Dorf Romantic and I love, love just chilling with it uh, as well. It's it's not a game I stream well because I it's it's one it's a game where I don't really have stuff to talk about. I find You're not a just chatting streamer. You're you're a response streamer. Yeah. You need something in front of you to be talking about to make content. I mean no, you can talk about really. you know there's a house I've got this quest. No, I don't I, know. I, it's because when I when I'm playing Dark Romantic, I'm talking about we're talking about politics. We're talking about completely unrelated things. To the yeah, game. that's the thing though. But then I get people come in and they like don't understand how the game works, and because like I don't know. At least at least that was that was that's how it was when it came out. Because I streamed it when it came out, and chat just kind of died. That's not the fault of the game. That's just it just doesn't vibe with me on stream. But I really enjoy playing it off stream. My and... chat's always dead, so it's fine. <laughs> Oh. Um, um, yeah, Not no, always. but no, I'm, I'm definitely going to play more of it. I'm going to try, like, yeah, I've been, I've been just chilling with it, doing the little, you know, trying to do the little quests and whatnot. Well, yeah. I mean, FG, there's this lovely quick mode you can play while you're doing other things. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't take for, it takes like maybe 10 minutes. Yeah, but I, 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 the thing is though, I, I don't actually need a quick mode because you can just, Close a run dead. whenever you're done. <laughs> no, no, but you can you, you can oh, just true. You can, I guess you could do that too. You can just stop and yeah. pick it up again. That's the thing, like because it saves your progress. It does. And it's also got save files for every single mode now too. Yeah. Yeah. So and hard mode, quick mode, and all that has its own save files. Doesn't it still got? Uh, doesn't it still got <laughs> random German word? Doesn't it even um have two save slots for like the normal mode or something like that? I think. I didn't do test how many it has. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't check. I just assumed it was one, but yeah, I think so. But yeah, no, it's it's Neat. really good. Like, it's a good game. If you like puzzle games that are not like stress, they're they're, they're not like time based stressful. They are just mechanically stressful. <laughs> and and they're not mechanically stressful in the way that like Baba is you is stressful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not too mind bendery, but it does get hard. So yeah, you know, there is that. Um. Should I just like step back and let you two talk about Dune? Okay. Sure. Let's let's <laughs> fight. No, <laughs> yeah, we, don't, okay. we, we don't have to fight. <laughs> no. We just before we started recording, we had a, a very, very short chat about it. Uh, I'm I'm gonna let FD go first. Yeah, okay. So for people that don't know what game we're talking about, this is Dune Spice Wars. Uh came out uh on last Tuesday. By Shiro Games. Last Dune's Day, please. Yes, uh, who've made um, uh, like uh, Northgard, notably War Tales and uh, Evil Land. There's also Darksburg, but we don't need to talk about Darksburg. <laughs> 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 um, and uh, it is uh, early access, so this is game. This is also a game that's not finished yet. It's a 4X RTS, so unlike the old games, which are RTSs, this is a 4X RTS with pause. Um, please, the, the, the play feel is very Stellaris, but different because, it, you know, you have many more resources to juggle, and obviously you have the whole Dune flavor with spice and all that sort of stuff. Um and I've been really enjoying it. I've played it for the last four days on stream. <laughs> but I think Kiri has a different opinion. 
<laughs> but, but before Kiri takes over here, I just want to say that it has my favorite Steam review I've seen this year, which it's which is just simply extremely exclusive to plus size villains. <laughs> because yeah. of House Harkonnen. And, yeah. And they're just yeah. kind of terrifying. Yeah. Well, he looks like a bull. <laughs> I, I haven't I haven't played this game, so I don't really have too much to say aside from the fact that I love the art. It's beautiful looking. It is. So it really is. Mm. So I enjoyed it. It it was okay, but I didn't know anything about Dune. I haven't read the books. I haven't watched the new movie, and the, the previous movie I watched when I was a kid, and I don't remember anything. It's bad. That's good that so, you don't remember. <laughs> so going in there without knowing anything about the universe, the game doesn't explain anything about the universe. I just, I, I would have liked to know a bit more about it. Chat educated me, so there's that. But like, I know it's early access and I hope that they're going to add that. Just more, I don't know, lore, more flavor. Just, I, I don't know. It was a bit disappointing, I think, in that sense. Um, it had a couple bugs and my biggest issue with it was that you can, you can scale UI, which is great. And I did that and I made it bigger. But then also when you had pop-ups for um, espionage, for trade requests, for technology, uh, it zoomed that window as well. And that was too big for the screen, but you couldn't pan in the window and you couldn't move it around. Mm. So before doing any of that, I had to go to the settings, scale the UI back, do the thing, go to the settings, scale the UI again to make it legible. It was... Uh... It was so frustrating. So basically, so eventually... it's it's hmm? not for any bigger resolutions than 1080p, is what you're saying. I you're am playing... playing on 1080p, but I just I wanted it bigger because it was so tiny. Oh, okay. To yeah. be fair though, um, War Tales has the same issue. I think that's a Shiro Games thing. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I had that problem with War Tales, can confirm. Mm. So that was really, really maddening, and eventually I just yeah. gave up and squinted my eyes at the screen. Um, the gameplay was good. Uh, it's There's so much Northgard in it. So mm. it's, it's basically more complex Northgard in the Dune universe. So it wasn't bad, but for me it was very clearly early access, and I played it for one stream, and I'm good. Until it comes out. Because I would love to have a campaign and multiplayer. Playing just skirmishes on my own, it's just, I've done it now. It's, a, it's kind of funny. The time, the point that I enjoyed Northgard was when it was super unfinished, and as they developed it, I liked it less. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I, I really loved, like Northgard. I loved that first, like, unfinished skirmish mode and played, like, 40 hours of that thing in, like, two <laughs> weeks. And then I didn't touch the game again, played it at 1.0 and hated it. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I've just been playing the different factions. I've done mm. three wins now with three different factions. So that's one more that I need to do. Um, just trying to figure out like how they all play differently. Because on the surface, out of curiosity, they FT, don't. Yes. What What's your history with uh, Dune as an IP? I know less than Kiri. I have seen okay, nothing. Okay, so I'm the only one here who knows anything about no Dune. No books. Got it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I have nothing. I've I know nothing. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I don't think, but, um, so the thing is on the surface, everything plays relatively the same, but each faction actually has their own strength. And, um, if people are put off by the reviews, yes, don't expect the old RTS Dune, but if you enjoyed Stellaris and or Northgard, you will probably also enjoy this, but yes, it is early access. Um, but I don't know. I, I just have, I just enjoyed playing the different, um, different um, groups and factions and going for the different endings because there's a couple of endings. It definitely needs tweaking and balancing though, for sure. Of course. I mean, that's to be expected, yeah. right? There's some stuff like doing assassination is so long. And I was trying to set one up today and then I just won the game without even trying uh, <laughs> doing like a, uh, like a hegemony win uh on the side so because it takes so long and you need so much spy stuff this may it might be different on on the other difficulties because i was just playing on medium so it might be different if you play on hard or insane mode but yeah i don't know definitely so i i, I just want to throw this out there because I, I i feel like some of you here have like an aversion to sci-fi stuff 
Dune is so far gone from sci-fi, it's almost like a weird techno fantasy. Like, I, I, I don't know. It's just no, spice. Like, yeah, is this? Hmm. I learned it's everything. I mean, it's, it's, I thought that you just it, wanted it spice is. for cooking. No, it, 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 it unlocks your brain and give, it basically it makes you smarter than a quantum computer. Essentially, yeah, I, I learned that. <laughs> Yeah, but also more because it also enables FTL drive and all sorts of other yes. things. Yeah, so That's it's how like they travel through space. It's like amazing. Um, it's like no, magic. Practically. The thing, the thing is, Chad, Chad did a really good job on on educating me as well. Because um, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people, but I would like to note, I do not hate sci-fi. It's just I never, I I never got into Dune because nobody around me ever was like, "Hey, you should check this out." When I was growing up. I really Sorry. need a reason to reread all of Dune, and I'm slowly getting closer to it. <laughs> uh, it's so many books, though. It it's is, like yeah. Nine or ten books, or something. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm really happy to see um, Shiro making another one of these um, because they made, uh, you know, Northgard, right? Which was kind yep. of its own thing, really. Like, it's, I guess yeah. there's Stellaris, but. Stellaris is kind of a different thing again. Um, and this kind of seems like them trying that mold again. And I'm really excited because Northgard is a really neat idea. Yep. Yep. Northgard yeah, is absolutely. a really good take on, on RTS, I think. Yeah. And that style of RTS isn't some Like, we don't even see RTS games very often. And yep. so, like, a, 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 a bigger scale style of RTS is something that we see even less often. It's like... Uh, Rebellions, um, Sins of a Solar Empire is like the only one, other one that really comes to mind. And maybe AI yep. War, but that's like, it's another weird thing. But like, th- th- there's just not a lot of games like that. And it's it's cool to see it come out. And I'm so happy that Funcom's uh, exclusive rights for all Dune video game IP for the next 10 years is actually releasing, not, you know, Conan the Barbarian um, <laughs> massive dong simulator <laughs> in a survival world but dune skin because they could have just done that they could have done really that easily yeah. yeah i'm really glad they didn't because i didn't want to see harkonnen like that uh but <laughs> oh, that, yeah that's uh that, I, I think that's dune is there anything else we want to say on that one or should we move on to the next no we can move on i think okay. that's dune spice words <laughs> <laughs> We're doing with Boom. it. Yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> womp, womp, womp. <laughs> and and I I will play this at some point, either when I have the budget for it or when they send me key. It's, if they ever send me potential. Sh- Shiro Games, if you're listening, please send me key. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, it's what it is. Um yeah. so uh let's see, we've got the Serpent Rogue on here, we got Tavern Master, and we got King Arthur. What's next? Let me quickly talk about Serpent Rogue. Don't want to talk too much about it. It's very disappointing. You're a plague doctor and it's kind of like an action adventure. It looks really cool. I like the art style. That reminded me a bit of Weird West. Um, but it doesn't really explain things very well. It's got a lot of bugs and it's not fun. So That's if, pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it's a version 1 release. If it were early access, I'd say that's okay. They claim it's version 1, so it's just stay away from that. It's not uh, yeah. good. That's all yeah, I have to say about it. Low mixed reviews right now. Yeah, yeah I played the um, I played the demo during the latest Steam Next Fest. So that was like what two months before February. Release? Yeah, I yeah. think I think two yeah. months ago. There still and is a demo available, so you can still play the demo. That's good. Um, and I had the exact same issues. It doesn't tell you anything. Um, like you can craft, but you have to kind of like figure out where the heck you're going to get the resources from and then i don't know if you've ever died but if you die you have to go back to your screen and collect I stuff did. yeah but it doesn't died... tell you where you are it's like oh oh it actually tells you where you are now but i died because there was like a corruption thunderstorm or a corruption storm in that one area and it was counting up to that so i thought hey, okay let's see what this is right so i I met that thunderstorm. You can't outrun it. You just die. And and then I had to go back there. But like, uh. you can't even get away from there. But the game doesn't tell you that corruption thunderstorms are bad. Like, it's, ah, uh, it wasn't fun. Yeah. I would assume corruption thunderstorms are bad. 
I mean, yeah, of course, but <laughs> maybe you can dodge it or maybe you can just walk away from it, right? But it like repeatedly True. zap you until you were dead. That's basically just Stalker, though. A stalker yeah, has yeah. like the these big void storms that appear in the skies and it's like hide underground or you just die that yeah but you can't things. even hide you can run away but like you have so little hp you take three steps and you're dead also you have like no stamina fun True. sounds yeah, like a then... very fun video game yeah let's Serpent skip Rogue. it next one <laughs> um yeah, so uh next. i think i think you both have king arthur knight's tale on your list and then fg has tavern master yeah, yeah so king arthur was great uh, I played it when it came out as an early access game over a year ago. Now version one is here and it's it's great. It's absolutely amazing. I was sponsored to play it again, but like it's so good. It's so good. And I'm gonna play it again next week. So it's a dark fantasy uh turn based combat RPG in Arthurian mythology. And you you're you're some moderate, you can be the bad guy. You can also play a redeeming arc, but obviously I'm going to go full tyrant. <laughs> Question. Did you play normal mode or roguelite mode? Which is, roguelite. I don't understand why Rogue they call it. Yeah. I don't understand why they call it that because what they mean is Iron Man. <laughs> no, this so... is this is why I want to slap people every time they call not a roguelite a roguelite. Because it's like, it's, 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 just it's, it's a rogue. They call it roguelite mode with T. And I get why they do that. No, it's Iron Man. It's Iron Man. It's just Iron Man because when Is you're dead, though? you're dead. Yeah, because you're, you're no, dead, you're you dead. Have, no, no, no. That, that's not why they do it. Because you have the hub world. You have Camelot, right? Your hub world that you build up. And then it, in that sense, it's like Darkest Dungeon. Because you have your Hamlet. Hamlet is Camelot. And you get a hospital and you get the marketplace and you get all that stuff. And then you can... Um, so it's easy Iron Man mode. Outfit your heroes. And then you go on adventures. Yeah, but you and have then, that in normal mode too. The only difference and then in normal mode. Come back. Yeah. The, the only normal mode, the only difference between normal mode and roguelite mode is that in normal mode, when your characters die in combat, they come back. In roguelite okay. mode, they're just permanently dead. So it's yeah, just it's just, just Iron, Iron Man. Man. It's just Iron Man. If a character so dies, they die, but you still get progress for the rogue, whole thing. That's that, interesting. That's not that, yeah. that's, that's not even like a run based thing. That's no. not even that's it's just primitive. That is really stupid. That's just hard mode. <laughs> just yeah. call it hard mode. Uh, yeah, it's weird. Okay. I don't know. I don't I, I don't know what I did it, but um I played it too. It was also sponsored. Um I played it for five hours and I went into so the thing is what it doesn't tell you is when you play roguelite, it kicks you into hard mode automatically. So it makes combat hard combat hard. Um, which I think is the second hardest difficulty. I have and... noticed. Yeah, I went into a fight that was designed for five people with three people, and then mm. I got stuck because there it was. I think it was a side mission after chapter after mission number three, and uh, it was a really long mission. You had to fight several groups of like twenty freaking undead, <laughs> and then at the end it was like, all right. Now you have to find these three big hero dudes that have been resurrected as well. Good luck. And you had like two campfires where you can heal and you had two shrines on the map and that was it. And that's when I then, we tried a couple of times and then I closed the game and I played, uh, I played Dune. <laughs> <laughs> Rage quit. So I, 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 I haven't played this game. Um, I've been aware, I'm aware of it though. And I... Would love to see a documentary about the history of this studio, Neocore Games, because I know if I know a few random factoids about them, but the main factoid that I know about them is that they're art led. The vast majority of game studios are gameplay led. Like you design your gameplay, come up with your gameplay loot, and then build the art and everything else around that. This studio is the opposite. They design the art, the visuals, the style, the look, and then they design gameplay around that. Which is really interesting when you look into their history because they've, they've been putting out games for like over a decade. And their first like four games they put out are like really poorly reviewed. Um, but they've like slowly crawled out of that rut. And as their like history goes on, it's like, okay, they're, they're getting there. Like they're getting to mixed positive reviews and then positive reviews and then back down to mixed. And the, their last few releases, which is King Arthur, Knight's Tale, uh, Inquisitor, 
uh, Martyr, or no, Inqui Inquisitor Prophecy and Inquisitor Martyr, the two Warhammer games, and uh, the last um, big pack of Van Helsing games, like they finally managed to figure out how to make it work. And I, I want to know how they design games now, because I, that it's just a fascinating idea as somebody who's a video game design nerd. That is yeah, it's interesting. That they design games backwards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, backwards sounds a bit mean, but un unlike everybody else is doing it, I suppose. Yeah, I I mean, they, they, there are other examples of like art led studios out there, but they're kind of the big one. <laughs> like most art led studios are like, oh, it's like two people, right? And they design mm -hmm. the art and then they make a game for it, right? Yeah. Um, but it's it's you, it's not something you see very common in like the double A AA to triple A space. Um, and like, I, I played their old King Arthur strategy games from years ago. I had the discs, uh, that's how old they were. Um, but like, I remember those games not being very good. Like I remember playing them and being like, I'm going to go back to playing Might and Magic. Um, <laughs> but like, it, it, it's, 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 it's really interesting, uh, hearing like murmurs come out. It's like, you know, they're art led, right? It's like, what? But, um, I'm not meaning it as a knock against them. I just think it's a, a neat design choice. Yeah, so sounds good. I mean, it looks beautiful. Neocore makes mm. games that look really pretty. Yes, yes. The intro trailer is really cool. It is. As well. I still like the voice acting. Yeah. Yeah, I need to, I just need to start a run that's not like either like on like super hard mode or just mm -hmm. so basic, basic, because basically what I did was like one of my dudes got so hard. So I put him in the hospital and was like, okay, I'm going to do the side mission, which I had one character that was already over leveled for. How bad could it be? Well, <laughs> yeah. If it says five people or four people, send four people. Don't send three. <laughs> Noted. Thank you. Yeah. yeah I'll yeah, keep that yeah, in mind. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the, the last thing we have on this list here is uh, Jess's favorite game of last week, Tavern Master. Yeah, I, I assume. I mean, I, I played it because Jess has been really enjoying it. And it did just get an update. It got the 1.1 1 .1 1 update. 1. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's gotten it's done some like it, there was basically it just had some UI rework which it direly needed because there was definitely some some issues with that. There's still some stuff like it's it, it still has that issue when you pick up and uh, to place a um, a decoration or a table or whatever, and then you you place one and you grab another, but then you're like, oh no, I don't want to place it. Normally in a normal game you just right click and then click something else, but in this game you have to click escape. And then it doesn't stop that. It closes the entire construction menu. And that's still something that's really annoying. But it is a really nice, fun uh, tavern keeping game. And I, I know why, I, I understand why people have really enjoyed it, why Jess really enjoyed it. I know Evil Trick also had a lot of fun with it when he played it uh, a while ago while it was still in early access. It was really fun. I enjoyed it. I think Kiri would also enjoy it a lot. Um, I played the demo for it a while back. I think it was last year or already. But yeah, at that point, it was just boring. I felt like I didn't have anything to do, but then th that was the demo. So when I watched Jess, it looked like there were lots to do. There was so... more to do, yeah. And it's great when so, you yeah, hire a cook. Good. Yeah, it's great when you hire a cook and then immediately the first thing they do is set the counter that doesn't even have any fire on it on fire. <laughs> Just random arson in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's just great. like The Sims, yeah. like you're chopping stuff on the chopping board. And then <laughs> yeah, and then fire. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's great. No, it's really cool. And the, the, yeah, people can come at night and steal. That's that was also great. So I bought, I bought. <laughs> it was great. People can come and steal your stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was poetic. It was poetic basically because uh, I literally it was end of day. I bought, I finally bought the ale barrel for five hundred coins. I'm like, yeah ale i'm gonna fill it and i put it in and then i click to start next day and then the stupid thief comes into my in my inn grabs the entire giant filled barrel of ale goes out again and the game is like oh yeah we haven't told you about this yet people can come and see your stuff you should hire a guard and i'm like no <laughs> that's mean yeah that although so i guess it, it starts you off with a, a taste for blood and vengeance yeah so yeah, no, it's fun. I, I recommend it too. I know why Jess enjoyed it a lot. That's amazing. <laughs> I um, so I, I I have something I want to insert into this list that I didn't write down here, um, <sighs> real quick at the end. 
Um, so I want to brag about something. I uh, this this is un are you, are you finished with Tavern Master? I'm done. Year? Yes. Okay. Um, I found something in Dwarf Fortress I've never seen before, and I just want to talk about it real quick. What so is it? I I have thousands and thousands of hours in Dwarf Fort, right? And I've played hundreds of forts, and I've never seen a gnome. I know that there's gnomes in Dwarf Fortress, but I've never actually seen a gnome before. In the most recent fort that I've had, I have gnomes. And chat keeps telling me to kill them because they are technically evil. But they run into your fortress and they drink all your alcohol and they leave. That's all that they do. They just show up, <laughs> they run into your fort, they drink all your booze and they leave. Oh. Um, and I'm so happy to see them every spring. <laughs> I leave booze outside for them. Like I like there there's there's traps that like you can go down into the fort and like they'll get caught in cage traps and stuff and or like get cut up on my knife traps. But like I've literally set a separate stockpile outside of my fort full of booze that's just it's just there. And they they go up there, they drink all the they guzzle all the booze and they leave. Aww. And, I, and it's the first time cute. I've ever seen them. <laughs> they've they they're one of the rarest things to see in Dia. Like there, there's two creatures that you'll basically never see in Dwarf Fortress: cave dragons and mountain gnomes. Also dark gnomes, but they're like the the they they're like the haunted version of like they're basically the same as gnomes, um, and stranglers. And they're that those are the other thing you'll never see. Um, and they're they're just their spawn rates are really low. They only spawn in very specific biomes, and those biomes almost never spawn. And there's a chance that they won't spawn in those biomes in World Gen. So odds are pretty good you'll never actually have them in your worlds, but. I found mountain gnomes and I'm very happy. That's <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah. Um, but I th I think that's it for games that we've been talking about to talk about. Uh, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna move on to news right after this short break. Hello, I am Suey. I am a part-time streamer on Twitch, part of the lovely House in Frequency. And I am also a full-time student. I stream primarily wholesome kind of indie games with, you know, slice of life, RPG, all that good stuff. And you can follow me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash suey, S-U-W-E-Y. All right, welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed that quick break. And uh, we're going to talk about the news. Once again, this is the Halcyon Frequency podcast for uh, May 1st, 2022, episode 16. I actually can't remember if I said that at the beginning. Oh, well, whatever. We did. Uh, I said it now. Late title card. Anyway, uh, I'm blind, and I'm joined by 2D Carry and FG Squared. Sorry, I interrupted you. What were you going to say? Oh, you did mention it. Sorry. Oh, I did? I okay. interrupted yep, you, but... Yeah, that's what it is. Um... <laughs> So uh, we, we have this um, thing called internet lag, as well as articles I was going to talk about, but I just changed them. We have this thing called lag, and there's like half second delay. It does make talking kind of difficult sometimes. So, <laughs> um, but um, so Bloomberg wrote an article, as they tend to do, um, except this article is about Twitch and um, about, uh, let's just say, Amazon trying to uh, make as much money off of Twitch as they tend to do. Um, this article goes into, is it fair to say detail, uh, about uh, kind of what Twitch has been doing over the past few years. And I think that it is maybe one of the, it's an understandable reaction that we've had to this article on social media, because what what this article covers essentially is it talks about the ad incentive programs that we've already got, plus expanding that ad incentive program, uh, as well as uh, changing the, um, this is a, this is a really rude way of wording in this article, but they the way they word it in this article is some changes to Twitch's monetization structure could be implemented as soon as this summer. Uh, the people said Twitch staff is considering paring back the revenue cut of its channel subscriptions granted to its top echelon streamers. I don't think any of us here um, <laughs> from fifty percent or to fifty percent from seventy percent. So basically, the higher cut which we get on certain tiers. Um, for all tiers, essentially, down to 50%. Um, so this doesn't even apply to us, so keep that in mind while listening to us. Um, another option is to create multiple tiers and set criteria for how to qualify for each one. I think we already have that. Like, yeah. we, there's already multiple tiers of Twitch partners. We have, like, normal Twitch partners like us. There's affiliates that are, like, basically just, like, mini partners at this point. They have almost the same perks. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, then there's ambassadors, which are, like, fancy Twitch partners. And then there's fancy, fancy Twitch partners, which just means that you get a lot of view counts, and then they give you money for being famous. Yeah, though, though apparently, um, to interject there, 
uh, with the advent of uh, localized subscription pricing, the whole send them a message if you're above X amount of paid subs for X amount of months to get the better cuts has been axed because yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it was 300 subs, right? Or was 500, it 500? 500. It was 500? 500. Yeah, 500. Yeah, 300 was front page. 500 was... Yeah, so if, if you had more than 500 paid subs, no gifts, no primes, uh, you could get a higher pay cut from Twitch. Um, and that's essentially what this is talking about, um, which I've never even gotten close to. Nope. Um, so Same. I, I, I've pa I passed 200 briefly once, and, but yeah, I, I've... You know, Anyway, um, Twitch may uh, Twi Twitch may offer to release partners from exclusivity restrictions, allowing them to stream on Google's YouTube or Facebook. FB.gg. Yeah. So, I think this is like the big bugbear of this thing, and it's uh, so far. I I mean, the I've seen people's responses on Twitter, and I'm not totally certain I'm as concerned as a lot of people. But uh, go on, FG. I'm neither. Because the thing is, th none of this is confirmed. Exactly. None, none of this is confirmed. This is all stuff that they're currently talking about. It's the whole thing again with, uh, remember about, I don't know, was it a year ago, two years ago? I don't know, pandemic times, whatever, where it was like, oh, partners are going to get ad-free viewing, which then was leaked from the partner Discord. And turns out, hey, that never happens. <laughs> and... It's the same exact thing. When when there was rumors about Twitch having their own tipping system, which turned into bits, which we have now, um, which most but you 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 pay for silly little icons and then you throw them at streamers one penny at a time and streamer make money and you pay the cut on top. Um, when when that when that system was being rumored, there was a very brief period of time where there was a panic amongst Twitch streamers that Twitch was going to ban the use of third party tipping platforms. Like at the time, it was night devs tipping platform stream labs and uh, patreon and um uh game wisp those were the ways that you could make money uh at the time on twitch if you weren't a partner um because this was before the affiliate program even and there was a very brief rumor there that twitch was going to ban the use of third-party tipping platforms and this this to me just seems kind of the same as that yeah, it's somebody said something. We don't have all the information. It's not confirmed and it creates just panic, kind of. I mean, the thing is, I I'm sure they have been discussing that. Um, somebody, I don't know, this was in the partner Discord. I'm not going to say names because, you know, uh, don't, 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 don't call them out. But they did the math, basically, with like, you know, AWS encoding prices adjusted for obviously twitch probably gets them cheaper etc etc but the thing is all those big streamers especially the ones with a cut with a 70 30 cut twitch essentially makes no money on them because of encoding costs and that's that's the whole thing like i'm sure twitch is talking internally about ways to make more revenue because of course we still don't know because they haven't said it, but up until at least 2019, I think that's when we, when there were like harder numbers, Twitch was still not profitable because the majority of people on Twitch don't spend any money. So like, and, and with the pandemic, the influx of streamers and viewers ergo like the whole scaling of like needed resources must have been insane. So I, I understand that they're trying to make sure that they can continue offering their services. How, yeah. how that's going to look? We don't know because these are these are internal talks. Right? All, uh. all that articles like this actually do is hurt people that are trying to make a living on this platform from what mm -hmm. I can tell. Um, because all that happens is you, you get people like me trying to pay bills and then you have people saying, I'm not giving money to Twitch anymore. And that's just, okay. Lost revenue source. Um, and that like, I get it, but then you also have people that don't support Patreon or maybe they don't have a PayPal account. And then it's just like, well, all right, 
cool. So all that this article is doing really is it's damaging people who are just trying to make a living on the platform. And like, we should be cautious, right? Like if this change comes into effect, I think it like if, if everything that happens in this article happened, the only thing that would actually change for me personally is I wouldn't run any of the ads. Um, and I would have multi-streaming capabilities. If everything in the article that Bloomberg wrote or that B Bloomberg part published, I'm looking for the author mm. right now, but, um, if, if, if every single thing comes to fruition, the only thing that would change to me is I'd be able to stream on YouTube concurrently. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. Like exclusivity for Twitch is like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. The only good thing that Twitch has from Twitch's perspective, right? If they lose that, everybody's going to multi-stream somewhere else. Like Twitch is going to yeah. would hurt itself with that so much. I don't ever see that dropping. Hundred percent. Mm -hmm. Like I, I wouldn't ever make a Facebook account, but I'll stream on, like, YouTube. Why not? Yeah, same. <laughs> Maybe not concurrently. I think we all would, but... wouldn't we? Because why not? Yeah. If if your contract is not keeping you from it, it doesn't hurt you. Yeah, it very but, quickly becomes like yeah, a just you're you're silly not to. It's not no. gonna happen. Also, the thing is, um, like, this is also something that really bothered me about the article, about the author. They don't understand the ad incentive program and how it works at all. Like, mm -hmm. they they wrote like, yeah, they have like this thing where you run like two ads, you get like for for like what X hour you get forty dollars. Like, they went with the example numbers on the help article, and it's like, no, everybody gets their own offer. And yes, they've been crap, but. <laughs> that's no, a different that, topic that is a different topic topic but as somebody who who like got into that beta test from the start i can say from the three offers that i've gotten the first two were utter rubbish the third one was actually reasonable it was actually well, haven't reasonable. struck out is what you're saying they haven't struck out yet yeah, so it's not amazing. It's not like, you know, okay, when you when you guarantee when you run these ads guaranteed, you make more than you would do just running the ads normally, but it's it's sort of on par. So if you're expecting to have a low month, like for me, for example, like the for the next month, the May, the May offer that I got basically was within 20 to 30 bucks of what I've been making on ads. And that's for less hours streamed than in those months, which you then still get on top. So it's it's getting there. Is next month going to be good? Don't know. But, you know, it's something. <laughs> so uh, from, from, from just from this article here written by Celia, I, I think that my biggest bugbear with it is Twitch has always kind of been a leaky faucet to a degree. There's always bits and pieces of information floating out. Like, yeah, there's certain mm. things we can't talk about for contractual reasons, but you can go find all that information if you go look. It's, you know, that they'll send out like stuff that we're contractually obliged to not talk about via an email to everybody. And then 10 minutes later, it's on Reddit. So it, Twitch has always been a leaky faucet. Information comes out of Twitch all the time. Twitch is a really big company. They're going to be talking about ways to make money. Yeah. And I think that an article like this being sh fired out to everybody and then covered by everybody, even people who stream on the site who maybe stream a little bit more casually and aren't on all the time and this isn't their primary income, at the end of the day, all it does is it damages people on, that are just getting by on the site and damages the site as a whole. If these changes come into fruition, we can have that conversation. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Just remember, they're talking about stuff. Everything's being talked about all the time, right? Just remember, we have the ability to do subscriber-only streams. Um, and that's a very silly feature. Uh, <laughs> so, I I don't know. I Yeah. This article just makes me sad because I, I wish that they reached out for comment for from people at our tier. Because, you know, if they reach out to Felix XQC at the top of the site, one, he's not going to give comment. But two, if they did... He's going to be mad because obviously he wants that higher cut. I wish that they'd reached out to somebody who didn't have that cut for an opinion because the only thing that I see from this article is a positive. 
<laughs> yeah. I can multi-stream. That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it wouldn't change anything. Yeah, literally nothing changes. So I guess, do we have anything else we want to say on this Bloomberg, Bloomberg article or should we move on to the next story? No, let's move on. Let's move on, let's yeah. Move on. <laughs> uh. So, Twitch adds <laughs> new gift sub badges and redoes the design for uh, gift sub badges. So uh, these these dropped the other day. Uh, they're in my chat at the very least. Yep, um, there's now um, gift sub badges at every 50 increment all the way up to 5,000 and they keep going. Which is um, insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although by, when they hit 1,000, they go up by 1,000 gift subs at a time. Um, previously, when it hit 1,000, it was just a little gold chest and it would just stay gold. Mm -hmm. um, the old one looked really ugly, and these look less ugly. That's my opinion on it. Yeah, they look nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah same. But they look. And it nicer. makes sense that they make new badges because people gift subs, and then it just continues the counting. Thing, so yeah. The thing, and the thing is, like, I mean, how long have gifted subs been available now? Obviously, people are even even if you don't necessarily drop, let's say like a thousand, you know, like in one go. But if you if you're a person with disposable income that does fifty a month over three four five years you do accumulate it adds up yeah. a lot yeah so it makes sense yeah it's the same. Even 50 a month if, if you do like five a month it'll yeah. add up like you'll yeah, be exactly. in the, you'll be over 100 at this point right so yeah exactly it's the same with how they added you know like what is it like the the five million bit Bits badge or something like that. <laughs> it's like fifty thousand dollars or so. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it makes I sense. I know somebody who has that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the thing I'll say about this is the thing that I always say when I talk about gift subs, which is make the badges permanent. Twitch. Yes. Oh my god, that's the one thing that annoys me as well. Mm. So if, if if you don't know how gift subs work, if you don't gift a sub for thirty days, you lose access to the badge. Yeah, but with so anything else on Twitch, you keep the badge permanently. You should not have to gift a sub every thirty days to maintain a badge in a chat. Just let the people yeah. have their badges. Stop yeah. it. But just, it doesn't reset, it. does it? If you gift no, it one doesn't. sub no. again, then it just adds up, right? Yeah. No, you keep you you yeah. you just unlock the badge again if you gift another sub. Yeah, um, yeah. And I get it. I, like I one one of my viewers um used to gift a lot of subs and ended up in a point where he didn't have a lot of money for a period of time. And then his badge went away, and now he he only subs with Prime on Twitch. That's the only money he gives to Twitch because mm -hmm. he's just like, I I will go through Patreon because that is really stupid that they took away something that I paid like five hundred dollars for. I agree so, absolutely. Yep, that's I'm totally unfair. It's ridiculous. Talk about changes Twitch should make. Make it so yeah. permanent. Damn yeah. it. Though um, I mean, can I just interject? I know it's not in the doc, but it's Twitch thing and the positive things friends are going away yay i don't yay! care about the friends Finally. <laughs> it's just been yeah. so annoying also friends leaves netflix friends also leaves as twitches yeah yay um it's good because it was just annoying follow from user card is back and i'm so excited it's so good so what that means yeah. is if you're if you're watching a stream and you click on somebody's username previously it would pop up a little bit of information about them and then an add friend button that button is now gone and it's now a follow button like yes. it used to be. <laughs> so you can follow people without going to their channels. So it's so much like shouting yeah. out people is going to be helpful again. Yes. 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 Oh. oh, I'm Fantastic. so Yeah. And the good thing is, the cool thing is, and, and props to Twitch. We literally talked about this on the partner discord. They asked us last week, maybe on our Monday this week. What does what what would be helpful for you? as a streamer to network with other streamers people yeah. immediately said follow from user card now we have it yeah so yay thanks for, thank so you for quick. listening <laughs> thank thanks, you Twitch. yeah thank you <laughs> all right um i think that's all of the twitch news we yeah have for today. yeah that's that yeah. was a that I, was a big i chunk. added that twitchcon eu tickets are on sale oh true yeah yeah that's that's all still news it, Yes. I'm going. I, li I really like the badge for TwitchCon EU. Yeah. yeah, it's a nice tulip in pixel art. It's a it's cute. really cute little pixel art badge. I like it. But like bad it. thing, you can only buy TwitchCon tickets with credit cards. Yeah. <laughs> it's so dumb. Nobody in, in Europe has a credit card. Well, that's not true, but a lot of people don't. Yeah. That's the so problem it's... with Europe being an old-fashioned society. It's silly. No, we have debit cards. 
Let's just we'll get credit cards. No, credit is bad. It's dangerous. I agree too, but like <laughs> I've never had any debt on my credit card. I have a very tiny credit card with like a limit of like a thousand dollars. That like the only time I max it out is when I need to buy a plane ticket and I pay it off the same day. So, I mm. I'm a, I'm not exactly a heavy credit user, <laughs> but it is strange to me that Europe doesn't have credit cards. But that is bad. <laughs> they should they should accept Dogecoin. <laughs> and bits you should be able to pay for your twitch god badge in bits remember <laughs> when you could bitcoin. pay for twitch subs with um bitcoin because i do yeah that was that was a thing back in the day <laughs> and twitch kept the bitcoin they just pay you out in the cash interesting yep. mm. yeah that was around the same time that steam it would let you buy games for bitcoin yeah, yeah it was <laughs> oh okay that was that was a weird year <laughs> um <laughs> Web3 is going great. Very good Twitter account to follow, by the way. <laughs> um, tell them the Halcyon podcast sent you. Um, but uh, Moving so, on. Um, <laughs> Ubisoft shuts down online services for 90 plus over, old, older games. So first off, Ubisoft has a lot of games. Jeez. Um, mm -hmm. So this basically is the, uh, this article from GameSpot. Um, they are shutting down... Uh, 90 plus of their older um online features so this is multiplayer this is matchmaking this is friends lists this is in-game chat this is everything that you would do that requires an internet connection within these old games they're shutting down the servers canning them done including um, including if you ever unlocked something with you play points like cosmetics for in your game you won't have access to that anymore that's going to be gone because it's online including Rainbow Six Vegas, which is a fantastic game, uh, Splinter Cell, Chaos Theory, uh, and uh, Just Dance, various Just Dance titles. I mean, there's like, half of those games are probably Just Dance titles, frankly. Anno, <laughs> Anno 1404, Assassin's Creed 2, Far wow. Cry 2, there's lots of, lots of oldies, Settler 7. That's not even that old. No. no. I mean, but I guess Settler 7 is old, but not that old. Not enough people are playing it. Is not worth it. Yeah, I'm supposed to. Yeah, but this is why we shouldn't have online features in every single video game or like release it so that we can run it on like some third party yeah. rude thing. Yeah. Come on, give us yeah. access to this stuff, Ubisoft. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Right. Morons. Agreed. <laughs> so I, basically. This just makes me sad. That's all that this article does. Yeah, sad. And uh, if you're a achievement hunter and you need online achievements for those games that they have, you want to get them now. You have a month. Chop, chop. <laughs> this Oof. even includes like Far Cry 3. Oh, even 3. Oh, wow. Yeah. Far Cry 3. That's weird. Like, do you know the definition of insanity? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Like, I loved wow. that game when that game came out. That game was great. Splinter Cell Blacklist, Assassin's Creed 3, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Driver San Francisco, Anno 2070. Um... Uh, to be uh, wait that what Anno twenty seven isn't that just like six seven no seven years ago? It's a bit I older than that, I think. Hold on, let me look at no, it. No, wait. No, I think. Oh wait, no, I no twenty seventy. The... True, yeah. That's yeah, the older. yeah, yeah. That that's the older one. You're thinking of twenty two oh five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty seventy is two thousand eleven. Mm-hmm. Twenty two oh five is the more recent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Desktop background simulator. <laughs> um. Hmm. But yeah, that, this this is just a really sad article. I mean, like, uh, there's links to the the full list of games that are being that are having their online services shut down, uh, yeah. and I will link to the Gamespot article that we are referencing here. Um, but it's just it's just sad. Um, but yeah, talking about things shutting down, you know what else is shutting down? The Bethesda Net Launcher. Yay! <laughs> Yay! I was wondering why why Steam told me yesterday that Elder Scrolls like. One and two, I think, are now free to play on Steam. And, yeah. and so, that was so out of context for me. And then <laughs> you talked about, or you posted the article earlier. I was like, oh, that's why. So uh, the result of this is net positive. Uh, so they're, move they're migrating Great. all their games over to Steam. Mm -hmm. And um, Elder Scrolls Arena, Elder Scrolls 1, and Elder Scrolls Daggerfall are now free on Steam, as well as Red Guard, which is the third-person pirate game, and a, a few other Elder Scrolls games are all, like, six bucks on Steam now. Um, so, yep. first off, uh, Daggerfall is great. 
If you want to play a great first-person dungeon crawler, granted, it runs in a window about this big on your monitor. Um, and <laughs> this doesn't work very well on an audio format, but it's, I'm holding I'm holding up like a little square with my fingers. It's like one sixty p. So it's it's just prepackaged, running with DOSBox. There there are mods and stuff that you can cram into it to make it run at proper resolutions for normal people. Um, and not crash your computer, um, which is what happened when I tried to full screen it. Um, but it, <laughs> y- you can play Daggerfall for free on Steam now, which is fantastic. It doesn't have achievements though, so there's no reason to play it naturally. Um, but, <laughs> of course, uh... yeah. No, I'm, I don't. <laughs> but yeah, so if you if you if you ever bought any games on Bethesda Net Launcher, and that includes um, Fallout seventy six, Elder Scrolls Online, um, God, what else was on there? I guess. Skyrim. Know. Was that on there though? Like, yeah, Sky- was- Skyrim Anniversary Edition was exclusive oh, to that for like two weeks yeah, or something. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a very but- short exclusivity period, but it was exclusive briefly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you play any of those games, uh, you have them on Bethesda Net. You have until the eleventh of May to transfer them, and um, they have like a whole like bunch of help articles to. Like migrating your games, I've already done it. It's like super easy. It just you just link your Steam account and it's just like ping and done. Um, but they also have like help articles on how to transfer your save files in case you have like ongoing save files. Also, uh, in-game currency, like um whatever the currency is called for Fallout 76, for example. Like all of that gets transferred, so none of that is lost, and you can just, just have it on Steam now. Yeah, I yeah. This is like a diff- the completely different type of shutting down thing. You know? Yeah, it's it's it's, yeah. it's almost more like consolidation, but like also, I never made a Bethesda account. <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, so I I for- would routinely forget that this launcher existed until things would get announced for it, and I'd be like, "All right, <laughs> that exists." Um, but <laughs> I, I, I I do think that less game launchers is a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I made an account. To play the open beta for Fallout 76. I think I that's why I made it. I bet you that account got a lot of use after that. <laughs> yeah, I never, yeah, especially because they already <laughs> like gave you a free migration to Steam for Fallout 76 anyway. <laughs> so. I, I, I actually would like to yeah. clarify something I just said. Less publisher specific yes. game launches is a good yes. thing. Yeah, I, I, want, I want games to be available on Epic, Good Old Games, Itch, and Steam. And any other like non publisher specific platform. I don't really like it when it's like, oh, I can only buy games from Ubisoft. Isn't Steam with Valve kind of a publisher platform? Yeah, though? but Valve doesn't make video games well, anymore. I mean, I guess they kind of just did, though. Well, they kind of did. Yeah, what about you played? The, the free, free to play portal thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, like, they I make, counter- mean, they make like, Counter-Strike and Dota, but yeah, it's, yeah. yes, it is, yeah. but it's not primarily that. Yeah. Right. It's that. like not anymore, EA yeah. Games and Origin, their launcher, yeah. they have, they have, does that thing still exist? I'm assuming it does. It does. It um, does. Or- Origin has like it's been renamed couple- recently or it has a new version of something. Is it just the EA launcher now? Yeah. Is it just the like EA that. launcher now? Okay, yeah. Well. It's still called EA like Origin is- in my... Thingy. EA anyway. Games' launcher has like uh, maybe a dozen games that aren't made by EA on it. Yeah, it's an EA specific platform. Mm, Steam agreed. has like I don't know what the thirty games that Valve has made over the years, and then like fifty thousand other things. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. yeah, they they put their own games out of there, but it's not publisher specific. But yeah, that's yep. that's all I really mean. Absolutely, agreed, one hundred percent. Um, Talking about games on specific launchers that are not dead, apparently. That are not dead, yeah. Apparently, interesting segues. I was informed by this today by one of my viewers. They were like, they came into my chat. They said, "Good morning. Guess what? I'm in the playtest for Skull and Bones this weekend." And I was like, "What What year is it?" I never heard of that game before. This was announced at E3 2017. Yeah, it's been there was like ten minutes of gameplay released at E3 E3 2017, and then nothing since. So for those of you who don't know what Skull and Bones is, so Kiri, um, (laughs) Skull and Bones is a third person pirate game based on the tech from um, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. So okay. Assassin's Creed, the pirate game where you like it's you're just a, an assassin, but you drive pirate ships and shoot pirate ships, with boats, um, and also play Assassin's Creed in in that pirate game. Um, 
They, they took that ship tech and were like, let's make a game based on that. Um, if you want to play a game based on that basic concept, you can go play Rebel Galaxy 1, which is that, but in space. Um, but anyway, it, it's basically just like, it's ship, they, they had this cool ship battle tech and they were like, let's make a pirate game out of this. So they were going to make like a multiplayer pirate battle thing. And it wasn't very clear with the E3 presentation. Um, yeah. But basically like that footage was released and then they never mentioned it again. No, okay. it, it was actually like it, it, it kept there was, popping up. And there they was were, a like, few points, yeah. Yeah, but... and there were like some play tests, and people were kind of like, eh. And then Ubisoft was like, eh, we're gonna redo it. <laughs> and then like you didn't hear anything again for a year. I and think they, was, like... they renamed the studio that was working on it at one point. And it was like, oh, are they still even that studio? Yeah, like, who and has then, it? Uh, and then it's like, uh, but here's Skull and Bones. And then people were like, again, eh. And then Ubisoft was like, oh, okay. And then you didn't, you haven't heard anything for like. And there was like nothing for like two years. Two or so, years, two, three years, yeah. And, and now, boom. And um, th th there's a play test this weekend. People are playing it, and uh, we already have leaked footage. Uh, not gameplay, not not really gameplay, but they had the the entire tutorial video, which is like. I want to say like eight minutes long for the like play test came out and it like basically tells you what you can do and apparently um because for a long time what they what they didn't know what to do was like is it just going to be the ship or are you also going to be a pirate that can walk around and do stuff because people just want to go pirate clear. game i just want to go pirate game that's the problem because Assassin's Creed Black Flag was a great pirate game and then it got ruined by the whole Assassin's Creed stuff in there. And um, <laughs> But now apparently, so there are ship battles, there is apparently PvP, but there's also PvE. There's also, not just ship battles, there's also stuff like treasure hunts and all that sort of stuff. So you can actually leave your boat you can go to like places do like world hubs and get quests there and walk around and level up your thing and all that sort of stuff so i i guess <laughs> skull and bones is not dead this is surprising <laughs> Yeah, and, and if you want to find links to these things, uh, we'll link to the Push Square article uh, written by Stephen Talby. I think that's how you said it, Talby. Um, yeah. Who and put, put together this little write-up on it. Um, it. It also links the video as long as it's still available, but um, the... It's the, not uh, currently. <laughs> it's not currently? I it's just gone. clicked it and it, it came up with an, oops, can't find the thing you're looking oh, for. Oh, okay. Yeah, I watched I'm it. sure it's been reposted somewhere, but... Yeah, I watched it, I think, uh, got three hours ago and it was still available then, but... I'm sure people can find it somewhere. <laughs> it's all, it, from what I can tell, it, it, they got it from Reset Era, so it's probably somewhere on Reset Era still. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's a, uh, just keep in mind, Ubisoft will shut it down in 10 years. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, they better not put NFTs in it. Yeah, I don't think so, because they've already <laughs> shut down the NFT stuff anyways, haven't they? Um, didn't didn't they also, like, announce a thing recently and then say, don't worry, there's no NFTs in it! Like, they, they've got, like, this big, like, mega game thing that they're working on. Yeah, I think and, so. And, like, the wording for it was very much, like... Anyway, that's a different mm. story, which I don't have an article I, for, so... I, I mean, I, I, I have had... I, I need to actually check this, because I want to not lie. Um, it's been so long... Oh, wait, was this removed? Oh, because I was going to say, I've had a Skull and Bones on my Steam wish list for so long that this was like back when when Ubisoft games were still on Steam, but it's actually gone. Because I was going to check how long it's been on my Steam wish list. Must have, it must have been since 2017. Yeah, there, there, there's no Steam page for this anymore yeah it's, so, it's probably one of those like do you ever scroll down on steam and then get a recommended game it says because you wish for uninitialized no do you, do you ever get that, that? No. So, no so if if you scroll down on the front page of steam down to where like it recommends games um it's like airborne kingdom because you wish for because you recently played dwarf romantic i have a bunch that just say because you wish for uh uninitialized and it's games that were on steam that were on your wish list that were delisted from steam and do not mm. have steam pages anymore that are still on your wish list so they're hidden even though they're still on your wish list and you can never remove them mm, interesting <laughs> I, I, I i i you know what that, that's surprising though because up until like a few months ago like the last time i went through my wish list and removed a couple of things gallon bones was still on there weird but I, weird I, 
I yeah, guess that's, that's also just another confirmation that it's not dead. And apparently, yeah, there's a playtest this weekend. I'm surprised. A, a, as as the Black Knight once said, it's only a flesh wound and I'm not dead yet. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> speaking of things that are coming back from the grave, uh, you can buy tickets to TwitchCon EU. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, I, I know a lot of people aren't going. I'm going. It'll be a small crowd. It'll be I'm, fine. I'm excited. I'm going to try and go next year to Twitch. Yeah, Canada. next year. I'm, I'm still a little up. bit too worried. But I hope you have fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'm going to have fun. It's going to be yeah, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I just I just looked a little bit like my, my entire Twitter after PAX happened was just like positive COVID test, positive COVID test, positive COVID test. So I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm good. I, I'm counting on it, to be honest. Like, obviously, mm. I don't want it. But yeah, it's yeah. gonna happen. Just take all the precautions you can. I you? will absolutely, yeah. But yeah, yeah. still gonna uh, go. I, if I didn't have diabetes, I think I'd be considering going. Mm. I'd probably go to TwitchCon NA this year if I didn't have diabetes. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I I can't get the flu, so I have to be careful regardless. So, um, yeah. but anyway. Um, if you if you're in the area, maybe show up and you can hang out with people. And the Around area is Amsterdam, you. by the way. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I I know I have quite a few people who watch me that are like an hour long train ride from there, so they're just like, I might just go show up and just see if people are hanging around, but um, who aren't actually planning on going to the convention. But um, that's it for news. But we have a a a, a kind of new segment that we want to test, which is releases. So this is the fir first podcast from May. We're actually recording this in April. But this is the fir first podcast from May. And uh, so we're going to read through some games that are coming out in May that we are uh, interested in or excited about that we think are worth noting. So um, I think we could just kind of take turns with these. So I'll, I'll read off the first one. Uh, the first one that we have on this list doesn't have a strict release date. Uh, and it's a game called Tile Cities. Uh, so this game is a... Uh, a a side project from the developer of Ostriv, who's a developer from Kharkiv, Ukraine, um, who has been working on this as a side project due to not having their main development rig um, for obvious reasons. Um, so they are working on this as a small side project. And because we've been talking about um, Dorf Romantic and other small games um, recently in the, in, the, in the small city building space, it's, it's one of those. It's a micro city builder. Um, it's on Steam. You can go wishlist it now. You can actually buy into the beta for three bucks on their website, which is tilecities.com. If you want to just buy it, you will get the uh, Steam key uh, when the game releases on Steam. Um, I don't know what the price tag is going to be on Steam, but it, uh, dev said a couple bucks. So I, I assume it'll be a couple dollars. Um, one thing I will say that's very important, though, is there is a point on one of their tweets where they said, uh, hey, recommend neat achievement ideas. So go recommend neat achievement ideas. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's the first one. Anybody? Oh, what? Kiri, do you yeah, want to do the next one? Yeah, so the next one comes out on the 3rd of May and is called Age of Grit. It's been around in early access. Version 1 is coming out. I've been sent a key and it looks really nice. It's a cowboy steampunk RPG. I like the art style. I'm going to try it. That's all I can say about that. Yeah, it does. It looks like something I would have played in like the early 2000s, but in a good way. Yeah. Um. FG, do you want to do the next one? Well, I, I don't know anything about it because okay. it's so not sure you I'm going to take this one yeah. and put it on the list. <laughs> on the 5th, Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters is coming out, the game with the longest title ever. Um, I've never played a Warhammer 40k game before, so I'm going to give this one a try. It's a 10 base tactical RPG. Um, so if you thought Dune was dense... <laughs> Yeah. Get ready to go to school. <laughs> I mean, I've I've been playing Warhammer, right? I know Warhammer 40k is something else again, but I Warhammer wanna... Fantasy is um a lot more straightforward than 40,000, but Yeah, but I I have to start somewhere, right? I want to check yes. it out. It's fun. War Warhammer is good fun. Um I'm going to do the next one. Citizen Sleeper um, so I played Norco recently and loved it. Citizen Sleeper is, uh, a science fiction post-capitalism narrative adventure game, uh, using, uh, a Yahtzee style dice roll game, 
um, to uh, come up with solutions for things and you are a um, hired employee on a space station that sells a part of their consciousness to capital to the capitalistic like corporations that run the space station for time at work and they re- erase all of your memories of your time at work so you don't actually know what you do at work. Um, that's the elevator pitch and it makes, gives me tingles and I've heard really good things about the writing from preview builds that press have had, and I really want to play it. So I'm going to play it. That's sounds, citizen sleeper. That sounds pretty, and that's releasing pretty cool. on the fifth. That sounds like the, the story, like the world sounds very intriguing. Yeah. It's a really intriguing pitch for a. Mm, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, I get to say something. Yay. Uh, on the, <laughs> on the 10th of may we can finally get our hands on songs of conquest which I'm so is so hyped about this me too it's gonna to be so good it's a turn-based strategy game adventure game um kind of like heroes of might and magic because it's got kingdom management and all of that in it heroes and, and all that jazz yeah and heroes and you know you raise your armies Hexes. and you build up your kingdom and go fight other people that also get stronger and all of that sort of stuff like all of that goodness and um it has a really cool like 2d art style that almost looks a little bit like you know like miniature like when you do like um oh was it was it cool when you like take a picture of something that's like technically really big but it sounds like it's really like it looks like it's really small like when you take like a photo from like a skyscraper and you photograph like the streets below and it looks like all like a miniature and like toys and Mm -hmm. whatnot it it kind of looks like that and i can't wait it's gonna be so good yeah yeah it is an early access release, but I. Mm. This is one that I've been expecting to be disappointed by. <laughs> like, I I'm, just, not. I'm so ready to just be super disappointed, but like, uh, I'm trying to level my expectations. I, I'm hoping it's great. Yeah. Hope not. I'm. I. Uh, if the game is half as good as the art, we're in for a treat. Yeah. yeah true. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, do I, do I, I the next one mine. immediately? <laughs> On the seventeenth. That's true, yeah. Uh, Naturally, this is true. (laughs) Endzone will get a new DLC. Endzone is a post-apocalyptic city builder. I played the previous DLCs. I don't actually know what this one's about, but it's going to get a new one. So it's it's called uh, Endzone, a world apart, because it has a long name, Distant Places. And it's um, all about exploration so you get new story missions new buildings new food item and you get uh aerial travel so you can actually like explore Ooh. the world um and see more of it that sounds nice and, yes and it looks really cool like the screenshots like the art was cool. always really cool in it and uh yeah it's gonna be cool to, like explore the world a little bit more than what we've seen so far um, from just the you know normal base map. Next up here is Old World Steam release. Yes. Um, so Old World has actually been out for gosh two years now. You've played it, right, Kiri? We played it when it came I did out. I play. It. Yeah. Um. I w- I want to say it's been a year actually because it was on Epic, and usually they've got that one year exclusivity, right? Yes, but has it been uh, longer? No. It was, it was an the... early access on Epic initially, wasn't it? And then it had yeah. a full release in Epic. Yeah, of May 2020. So it's been two years. Yeah, it's been what? two years. Yep. No. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. And yeah. um, uh, Time keeps on tripping, tripping, tripping. <laughs> <laughs> so Old World is uh, is um, mm. a a. It's a turn based 4X game. 4X game, yeah. But like... In the old set world. in the old world, yeah. And yeah. With, when it means like old world, like really old world. <laughs> and um it, it it weaves in some of that like extra storytelling and events and all that sort of stuff that you know maybe from like stuff like uh Crusader Kings. Crusader Kings. Kings. And, yeah, because I sort of remember stuff. it being like a mix of civilization and Crusader Kings. Yeah, exactly. Fun. Yeah, and it's, and it's also to... getting a DLC, sorry. Yeah, exactly. No, that's Maybe exactly what I was going to say. To that. say. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And I think because the DLC is coming out the same day, it was both mm-hmm. on the nineteenth. Yeah. And I want to say, if you grab the game, you get the DLC for free. That yes, day. I think in the first week or so. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's a pretty good little incentive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. The next one I have here is for the 24th of May. Uh, and this is for Crossfire Legion. So 10 seconds of backstory. Crossfire is a free-to-play first-person shooter that released in like 2005 uh, in China and then got an English pat port or published version in like 2006. Um, I played it from about 2008 until about 2011 and put probably like 5,000 hours into it. Um, it was just, a, it was, it was free to play Counter-Strike 1.6, basically with like reskinned maps. Like it was very much a Counter-Strike clone. Uh, eventually I moved to Counter-Strike, but I, I played it for a good number of years. Um, made a bunch of friends on it. I still talk to some of those people. Um, and, uh, Crossfire Legion is allegedly in the same universe. Doesn't look anything like I remember it. Um, but is allegedly in the same universe, and uh, it's a RTS game made by the, the good folks over at Blackbird Interactive, who are working on Homeworld 3, which is a game I'm very excited about, and um, also made a Hard Space Shipbreaker. Did I get the name right? Hard yes, ship which is, I always say Hard Ship Space Breaker. I think in, incidentally, right. that is also coming out of Early Access next month. I forgot to add that to the list, but it is coming out of Early Access next month. Cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Cro Crossfire Legion, uh, it's a, it's an RTS game that looks kind of Command and conquer -y. And I will play a new Command and Conquer, even casually off stream mm -hmm. yep. by myself. That sounds great. Uh, it has a campaign. It has multiplayer. It has skirmish. It has skirmish versus AI. So it's a pretty full featured game. It is an early access release, but like it has a campaign. So, and the campaign looks good. Like it's got like fully rendered cutscenes. Like it's kind of got like this weird cyber future Nazi kind of look to it, which, you know, is very Command and Conquer looking, yeah. um, which is, it's a fun aesthetic and it looks very cartoony and goofy. So I, I, I would like to play that. That looks fun. Um, I really hope it's good. Yeah. Same. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, next up after that, uh, on the 26th, is uh, we finally get the sequel to My Time at Porsche, My Time at Sandrock, <laughs> which is a, um, a basically a much more ambitious successor to the first one. It's a life sim. It's going to come out in early access. Um, originally, this was supposed to be um, just a multiplayer DLC for Porsche, but it's grown in scope so much since they started development on it. They had a Kickstarter for it. Um, Kickstarter, Early Access, already, I got, I got, because I backed it as well. I think we got access, I got access last year in February, because it was supposed to come out in 2021 in Early Access, but we all know what happened, the world, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So um, it's going to come out in 2022, and uh, it's a live sim, and it's going to be um, single player, and multiplayer, so that's cool. So if you want to, you know, have a 3D life sim game to play with friends, My Time at Sandrock is coming out. And uh, the same day that's coming out, also the long-awaited hot release that everybody is anticipating <laughs> and excited for, Sniper Elite 5. I can't believe they've made five of them. <laughs> yeah, they, they, yeah I, I, just, I just saw it because I, I don't know. Like, I have this weird affinity to sniper rifles in like shooty games, in video games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So <laughs> they're fun. They I have are. A confession. Yeah. I've played okay. Sniper Elite one, two, and three. <laughs> well then, I, um, which means when five comes out, four will finally be cheap enough for me to buy it. Yeah, true, true. I, true. I buy those games when they're under eight dollars. Yeah, when they're yeah. under eight dollars, I buy them, and I, I, they're they're always a fun seven hours of brain off on easy just. Pop. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> click click um, the person. So, Great so, point and click games. So yeah, that's coming out. Um, when I look at it, I do have to say the like from looking just at the screenshots, the graphics don't look amazing. Um like just from the Steam like screenshots, but that yeah, that's gonna be as you said, just a few hours of kind of dumb fun, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, so, so I just looked up the sniper elite series because you were mentioning that right sniper elite 4 is currently six dollars uh, it's 90 percent off yep that's that's in well, my price range we're good to go, go. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm buying sniper elite 4 um add it to cart um but yeah so that's uh that that's our releases for may 
And uh, that's this year episode of the Halcyon Frequency podcast. We don't have any questions. Uh, if you want to ask us questions, uh, jump into the Halcyon Frequency Discord and go to the podcast questions room and leave us a question. Um, but uh, I, I think that this is where we wrap up. So uh, let's start off with Kiri. Can you tell people who you are and where they can find your stuff? Yeah, I'm Tiddy Kiri, and you can find me as such on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, TikTok recently. I stream on Twitch, and then I put content everywhere else too. And I love strategy games, indie games, and it's always simulation sickness friendly. Yeah, I'm FG Squared, or FG for short. Um, FG Squared basically everywhere. Uh, Twitch, YouTube, uh, Tiki Toki, <laughs> Patreon, Instagram, because I, uh, I have had a talking with Arch and... Uh, He's like, do the thing. So I'm doing the thing. I'm also on Twitter, but on Twitter, there is a sneaky underscore between the FG and the squared. So make sure to include that. And I am blind. You can find me at uh, twitch.tv slash B-L-I-N-D-I-R-L on, and just B-L-I-N-D-I-R-L on almost everything. Patreon, uh, YouTube. I refuse to make an Instagram account, so it doesn't matter what Arch says. I ain't doing that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and also, I refuse to give uh, uh, any kind of traffic to TikTok because, you know, I, I've never actually been on TikTok, I've never used TikTok, but I've seen TikToks everywhere else. So as far as I'm concerned, it's just like content theft. I, I don't know how accurate that is. But anyway, I don't like TikTok. Like okay. I don't, I don't use know, it I, either. I just post I, that. I'm an old, I'm an, I'm an old man, and I just, I, 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 I don't need. You're the youngest right here. Stop talking. Yeah, I'm, I'm the oldest soul, and I refuse to <laughs> acknowledge TikTok. Oh, um, but you can find right. me almost everywhere else, and we as a group are Healthy and Frequency. You can find us all at healthyandfrequency.com. You can find more episodes of this podcast at healthyandfrequency.com, as well as links to our Twitch team page and other things on healthyandfrequency.com, including the Discord. Um, if if you join the Discord, you'll keep up to date on stuff that we do. And if you follow the team Healthy and Megahertz on Twitter, uh, you'll see updates on things that we do as a group. And uh, if you want this podcast to appear in places that you listen to podcasts and it's not where you're looking, uh, tell me, uh, just DM me on Twitter or something and I'll find it for you and I'll make it appear there. Uh, otherwise it's on Stitcher, Apple, Podbean, uh, Spotify, YouTube. Audible. Yes. Audible, Apple. I think I said that. Yeah. Apple, it's everywhere. Overcast. It's everywhere. And if not, let us know. What, what, what have we, what, which one have we missed? And if you want to help us, leave us a review wherever you can leave a review for it. Um, and uh, shout outs to our fans in Honduras because we are currently the 12th most popular podcast in Honduras, which um, video Woo-hoo! games and technology specifically. Gracias, um, Honduras. Well, thank we you. We were also, we, we were ranked in Australia. We were number 60 in Australia briefly. And we were also ranked in the UK a couple of times. Eh. Thank you very much. Thank you. And shout out to all of our fans in Texas. Until next time, (laughs) thank you very much for listening to this podcast. Uh, That was where we all say goodbye, I think. So, because I think Suey's waiting for us to go start a meeting. So, uh, (laughs) goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.